Hi, welcome back to Zach of All Trades. I'm Zach and today I hope to finish up the metal fabrication on the giving trailer. In addition to the fact that I feel like it's been taking me forever to get this trailer finished, I'm running up against some stuff where I kind of got to get some stuff done. All these welds are flash rusting. My fenders, probably the most expensive part of this whole project, which is ridiculous. Uh, they're rusting because I left them outside last night while I was doing some uh, sort of test fitting, some figuring on here. So I've got to get this finished up so I can paint all the bare metal and keep it from rusting up. The things I've got left to get done in order are fenders. I've got to get these things mounted up and painted. A cross member. I'm going to put a cross member right about in here because I don't like the size of the gap between here and here. I need to beef that up a little. Stake pockets. I'm going to put stake pockets around the perimeter so that I can build walls and fences with 2x4s. That's a stake pocket. Construct a ramp. Kind of pointless to have a trailer if you don't have a ramp to get the stuff up onto it. And if I can find the materials and get it figured out there's a little bonus thing that I think I'd like to do. So we'll see if we can get to that or not. But this is the extent of my metal fab that I've got left. And then I can go ahead and paint up everything so it quit rusting and then I can move on to other things. These fenders have given me more headache than anything else on this trailer as to how to, how to execute, how to complete the mounting of them. Because there's a few things that I want to... Uh, a few things that are in play here. One, I want to have them removable. I was reading about things uh, that people wished that they had on their trailers or features that, that are good to have on a trailer. And one of those things, especially given the narrow wheelbase of this thing, is to have removable fenders so that if I have something that's a little too wide, which is going to be pretty easy to do with a narrow trailer, I can pull the fenders off and I could actually drive it over the tires if I needed to. It's not something that I really want to do, but I'd like to have the ability to do so. So I want to have these fenders removable. Another thing that's been a pretty big bother is trying to figure out the clearance between the top of the tire and the fender and how to how to figure that. Part of the problem here is the this, I don't know what the proper term for it is, but this rocking part of the suspension, I have to have that dead even to, to determine what my uh, nominal tire top height is and then I got to measure off the top of that so I've got this axle jacked up just to the point where the measurement between the top of this spring and the frame is the same as the measurement between the top of this spring and the frame which tells me that this rocking portion is level that is where the top of the tire is going to be in relation to the frame when the trailer is level Next I'm going to measure at about the axle, the distance from the top of this frame here to the bottom of this edge, which is four inches. The research that I've done says that you need to have about four and a half inches of clearance uh, between your tire and your fender. So if that's four inches, I need to get it to eight and a half inches and then level it. Because my almost perfect welds here are simply almost perfect, when I go to put a straight edge on here for leveling, I don't know if you can see it or not, but if I've got it flat over here, there's a pretty big gap, like I can almost get my finger underneath it here. So my plan is to use those two points and cut that out of the equation. So now I need my line seven and a half inches up because these stick down one inch. Now, I can get this right. I'll go ahead and mark it because I'm sure it's going to fall off at some point here. And then clamp it. And there we go. That's how it will sit. And now to attach it.
And now, just goes in like that. The inserts that I'm welding in are these little 3 8 inch T nuts that I got from the local hardware store. Unfortunately, they didn't have any without the little spikes on them. No biggie. I'm just cutting them off before I put them in the hole. The other thing that I wanted to mention is whenever you're welding stuff that has threads on it, whether an internal thread or an external thread, it's good to have those threads covered up while you're welding. So for these, I'm just putting the bolt into them put in a minute hole and weld them. That way that the little welding balls don't bugger up your threads. Now the next time I get to the hardware store, I'll pick up some quick connect pins and based on that size, I'll go ahead and drill a hole straight through here. That way, I have a fender that is well supported so I can stand on it if I need to, but also if I need to remove it, all I need to do is pull the bolts forward and back, pull the pin, and it pulls right off. Now I'll rinse and repeat for the other side, like so.
Because the pipe that I'm using for the outside of this is gas pipe, like so, and the rod that I'm using is this 5 8 cold roll rod, I've created a pretty good amount of extra work for myself. You see the gas pipe has a pretty good seam right there on the bottom where it's joined together on the inside, and the hot roll also has a pretty pronounced ridge right here on it. And since they're the same outside and inside diameter, I've spent a pretty considerable amount of time reaming out the inside of the pipe and whittling down the outside of the rod to make it all fit together nicely. Not to mention the time spent on the lathe squaring up the ends. So the little orange tabs that I've got going on here, these are spacers because I want to have this thing pretty tight. I don't want it rattling around a whole bunch, but at the same time, I don't want to have the, uh, the edges of the, I don't know, the tubes right up against each other and binding. So I made these, we had a little arts and crafts time and I made these tiny little um, poster board, basically little poster board washers to stick in here until at least I get everything tack welded together. That way it'll keep the separation in there. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. Will it hinge? Well, all except for that part, what happened there? Perhaps it was just the sorry weld. That ought to hold a little better. Now let's try it. I think she's good, boys and girls. Now you may be wondering what I plan to do for a latch to keep this thing up. Well, that makes two of us. We'll figure it out together. All right, and now while you weren't looking, I went ahead and welded the whole rest of there. Put a little bit of paint on there, but not enough paint because, of course, last night was the heaviest dew of the year. But, got myself a nice hinge. I have also, it seems, engineered myself into a bit of a corner. My intention was for this hinge pin to be able to, to come out easily so that I could put different things on there or take the ramp off if I needed to. Uh, with the amount of force that it took to get it back in there after deburring and cleaning everything out, I don't think that's exactly going to be an option. So, now with that done, I think I've got the time and the materials. Now I can go ahead and do my little bonus thing. Beautiful. And there we go. Not pretty, not going to win any contests, but definitely stuck together. Now I can finally paint all this stuff and move on to the next phase. Look at that, will ya? She's starting to look a bit like a trailer. Well, that's it for now. 
but I've already procured the supplies for the next installment. I'll see you soon.